Okay, so now we're going to look at solving quadratic equations. And we're going to be able to solve quadratic equations. So previously, you may have said that there were no solutions. Um, so it's going to open up some different kinds of equations we can solve here. So I just wanted to talk about some of the stuff to do with notation. So I've written here, just as we tend to use x as the default real numbered variable, so we use x for when we just think it's like a regular kind of number, and we tend to use n for when it's an integer or a whole number, what we do is we use the letter z or sometimes w as the default letter for complex numbers. So this equation that we've got here is likely to have some complex solutions because of the fact that we've used the letter z. But if you do use the letter x, you still might come up with some complex solutions. But this is just the traditional way that these things would be written. So we're going to solve the equation z squared plus 25 equals 0. Well, pretty straightforward here, because what I can do is I can actually just subtract 25 from both sides, and then I can take the square root of both sides so that I get the plus and minus square root of negative 25. Now, obviously, we're going to then be able to simplify that because the square root of negative 25 is just 5i. So we get the two solutions are plus and minus 5i. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, why am I doing plus and minus here, but I didn't do plus and minus over here? Well, the reason is because there's no symbol here outside the front saying plus and minus. And so technically, if there's no symbol outside the front here, it just means that it's going to be positive. If there was a negative outside the front, then there would be a negative 6i. So when you look at the one we've just answered, we were the one that decided to do square rooting. And because we decided to do square rooting, that meant that there was going to be a plus or minus as your possible answers. OK, for the next equation that we've got, we've got z squared plus 3z plus 5. And that one is going to be a little bit more complicated. And I'm going to offer you three different methods about how you might like to solve this. So I think method one and method three are probably my favorite. But I'm going to start off with method one, which is to complete the square. So we have z squared plus 3z plus 5 equals 0. To complete the square, we half the second coefficient, so we get 3 over 2 squared, and then we subtract that coefficient squared, so you get minus 9 over 4 plus 5. Hopefully you're familiar with this from normal maths and from GCSE. So I get that z plus 3 over 2 squared is going to be equal to 9 over 4 minus 5. So we'll do 9 over 4 minus 5, which is minus 11 over 4. So we're now going to do the square rooting of both sides. When I do the square root on both sides, I get just z plus 3 over 2. And then I've got here the square root of minus 11 over 4. Now, you might like to think of this as the square root of minus 11 over the square root of 4. And remember, these answers are going to be positive and negative because we're the one doing the square rooting. I personally like to think of it in this way because then I can really quickly simplify the denominator. So we then get that z plus 3 over 2 is equal to plus or minus, we're then going to have root 11i over 2. So if we just finish this one off, I'm going to just come across here, we get that z is going to be equal to subtracting that 3 over 2 minus 3 over 2 plus or minus the square root of root 11 over 2i. Okay? The way we tend to do this is we always have the real number first and then the imaginary number afterwards. So let's try the quadratic formula. Now the quadratic formula would say x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So instead of it really being an x now, ours is a z. Well, let's pick out our values. So a is the coefficient of z squared, which is 1. b is positive 3 and c is positive 5. So b is 3 and c is 5. So using that formula, we get z equals minus b, which is minus 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared is 3 squared, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2a, which is 2. So z is equal to minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 20, all over 2. So that's minus 3 plus or minus the square root of minus 11 over 2. So I'm going to now sit, separate it as like this part and this part. So we get the minus 3 over 2, and then we get the plus or minus. Well, root negative root 11 is root 11i 
and it's also over two. Notice how I leave the i separate to the kind of fractional part that we've got here, and we've got the exact same answer that we have. So we're going to have a look at method three, which is using a calculator. So it's going to show you how you can do this using both the class whiz and the, uh, the graphics calculator. So if I just show you the calculator that I've got here, what you might need to do is you might need to go into the menu and you might need to activate the complex mode, which is number two. So when you go to complex mode on the class whiz, it then should have a little eye at the top that tells you that it has been activated. Now, if you don't know how to do this, um, if you want to do any calculations with complex numbers, you can press, um, I think, just this ENG button. There's a little purple eye above it, and that tells you when if you want to type in I. I'm going to go back to the menu, though, because we want to solve a quadratic. So I'm going to scroll down here until I get to the equation and function and press equals. It's two because it's a polynomial, and it's a two degree because it's a quadratic. They've got it with x squareds here, but ours is with z. So we had one z squared, three z plus five. I'm going to just press equals, and it should give me my solutions. There we are with the one from that we had earlier. You've got the minus three over two plus root 11 over two. That's the first solution. And the second one is just with the negative symbol that you've got there as well. If you keep pressing equals, it gives you some other things as well. It gives you the minimum value and the minimum value of y as well. Uh, but we're just going to try, uh, we're just looking for the roots here. So this is what it would be like for the graphics calculator. For the graphics calculator, you may need to go into the setup. So you go shift setup. Oh, you have to be in a calculation. Let me just delete some of these crazy things I was typing here. So you might need to go shift, setup, and then when it goes to mode, you just need to make sure that it's in complex mode like this, which is the first one. And also as you scroll down, the complex mode, the one that we want it to be is A plus BI. We don't want this R theta one. We might talk about that later. So just make sure it's in the A plus BI. When you go to the equation solver, you can then go to polynomial, two degree, and we're going to type one, three, five for the coefficients along the top here. And when you solve them straight away, you'll see those two solutions of the minus three plus and minus root 11 over two. They write it as one whole thing. Personally, I prefer seeing it as the real part and the imaginary part separate to each other. So you are now going to be able to have a go at doing lots of equation solving practice from exercise one B. Try doing a mixture, try doing some completing the square, some using the quadratic formula and verify your answers by using the calculator.